Are you ready to become a professional at a topic that comes up not only in the GRE and GMAT all the time, but also in real life too? I'm talking about becoming a fraction pro, being amazing at adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying fractions confidently and quickly. And I'm even going to throw in negative exponents at the end of this video because they also count as fractions. Some people can do these kind of questions, but they either rely on a calculator or they take a long time. But I want to show you an amazing method for confidently solving fraction questions. Let's get straight into it. Look at the question you can see on screen. What is the value of a half take away a third divided by a half plus a third? So what's my method? For adding and subtracting fractions, I call it the left right down method. Let me tell you what I mean. First, we draw an arrow going to the left from the bottom right to the top left. That's from the three to the one. You'll get used to this. Three times one is three. And we write that answer on the top left. Now we do the right, going from the bottom left to the top right. That's from the two to the one. Two times one is, of course, two. And now we do the down, the two denominators multiplied. Two times three is, of course, six. Now, what do we do with those two numbers at the top? Well, because we're subtracting the fractions, we're going to do three take away two. You see how the two results were three and two at the top? There's a subtract sign between the two fractions. So we do three take away two, which is, of course, one. So the answer is one over six. Now, for many of my students, this is even easier than finding a common denominator. I know it won't always give you the most simplified version of the fraction. Most times it will, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't though, we can easily simplify at the end. And this method skips, as I said, finding any common denominator. We just multiply to the left, multiply to the right, and multiply along the bottom. Let's try that for adding fractions. Look at the denominator of the original question, a half plus a third. Let me demonstrate. Draw an arrow to the left, three times one is three. Draw an arrow to the right, two times one is two. Draw an arrow down at the bottom, two times three is six. And what do we do with those two numbers at the top? Well, there's a plus sign between the fractions, so we do three plus two, which is of course five. So the answer is five, six. And be honest, look how quick and simple that was with no real thought involved. Just bang, 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 and we're done. But what about the final answer though? We have one six at the top and five six at the bottom. And both the GRE and GMAT love to leave you in this position where we're dividing fractions. And many students can't confidently divide fractions. So how do we solve this issue? First, we could write it in a different way. You see that we've got one six at the top and five six at the bottom, well that basically is asking you what is one six divided by five six. So we can write it with that nice lovely divide symbol that you're used to. One over six divided by five over six. It looks nicer when it's side by side rather than like a big stack. Anyway, how do we do that? One six divided by five six. Well now we get to my next slogan, keep change flip. I didn't invent this by the way, but I think it's a great slogan. To divide fractions, you keep the first fraction the same, you change the divide symbol into a multiplied symbol, and you flip the second fraction. I love this way of doing it. One six stays the same, the divide becomes a times, and the five six flipped to become six fifths. So believe it or not, one six divided by five six is the same calculation as one six times six over five. And why is that a better way of thinking about it? Because that's easy to work out. You just multiply the top one times six and multiply the bottom six times five, which gives you six over 30, which you can simplify to get one over five. That's the clue, by the way, why we change the divide into a times, because the calculation becomes so much easier. You just multiply the top one times six, multiply the bottom six times five. One times six is six, six times five is 30. I want to clear up two quick confusions you might have. First, some students will point out to me, 
Well, you could have cancelled out. When you're doing 1 over 6 times 6 over 5, you could have just cancelled out the 6s diagonally and got 1 over 5 straight away. Yes, you're right, but cancellation is a topic for another video. So I just wanted to do the simple, straightforward way this time, where we just simplify after we get the answer. And the second confusion you might have is, why didn't we use the left, right, down method? Because we're multiplying. Multiplying is very different to adding and subtracting fractions. Look to the right of the screen and you'll see how we add and subtract fractions, but that's not how we multiply. Multiplying is much more simple. You just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Don't worry though, we're gonna practice this in the next question. And this time you can try to pause the video and try it yourself. And to those cheeky students at the back who are saying, but don't we have a calculator in the jury? Can't I just type it into a calculator? Yes, you can, but what if the question is like this, where they give you a box to fill in, where you have to write the answer as a fraction? And if you get the answer 0.51478925, whatever, how do you translate that into a fraction? You can't, or not easily anyway. So it won't always solve your problem to have a calculator or even your mobile phone in real life. Sometimes you just have to work things out with fractions. But let's try those techniques that you loved in the previous slide right here. We're gonna do 3 fourths, take away 1 fifth in the numerator. Let's draw the arrows. Going up to the top left, five times three is 15. By the way, notice the position is quite important. I don't write the 15 on the right. It's gotta be written on the left because the order matters here for subtraction. Four times one is four. Four times five is 20. What do we do with the 15 and the four at the top? We subtract them because there was a subtract sign between the fractions. 15 take away four is of course 11 and the denominator stays as 20. Did you get that? Well, you've got one last chance to do the addition here at the bottom. Three fourths plus two thirds. Going to the left, we multiply three times three is nine, four times two is eight, and four times three is 12. And what do we do with the nine and the eight at the top? We add them because there's a plus sign between the fractions. Nine plus eight is of course 17, so the answer is 17 over 12. If you got that fairly easily, then test out your division practice that we learned. Test out if you can divide 11 twentieths, which is the answer at the top, divided by 17 twelfths, which was the answer in the denominator. Remember, because 11 twentieths was in the top, in the numerator, it means it's being divided by 17 twelfths in the denominator. So what does 11 twentieths divided by 17 twelfths become? Keep, change, flip. We keep the 11 twentieths the same, change the divide into a multiply, and flip the second fraction. So it's 11 twentieths times 12 seventeenths. Now again, you can cross cancel out and simplify or just work it out normally. So 11 times 12 is 132 and 20 times 17 is 340. The good news on the GRE, you don't have to simplify that fraction. You can just write it and that will count as the right answer. Another reason to prefer this method in the GRE to finding a common denominator because you don't need the simplest form for the GRE answers. Of course, if you did for any question, you could of course divide both top and bottom by two and keep simplifying until you get to the simplest form. But I'm not gonna do that here because we could simply write 132 over 340 and get the answer right and move on to the next question. Okay, time for the final part of this video, which looks like it's about exponents. And you might be thinking, I thought this was a video on fractions and why are you bring exponents into it? Because negative exponents, when there's a negative number in the power, they are fractions. So essentially these are fractions that we need to know and love just like all the other fractions. How do we do them? This is an area that many, many students struggle with. And there are not many students who are confident about handling negative exponents. So I want you to be one of them and everyone watching. What does it mean when it says three to the power of negative one? It doesn't mean negative three. In fact, there's nothing to do with negative in the answer. What does it mean? The negative means you flip the fraction. I know what you're thinking, where is the fraction? Well, the three becomes one over three. So three to the minus one is one over three. 
the negative in the power just turned the 3 into 1 over 3. And the power of 1 didn't do anything. That number 1 didn't change anything because powers of 1 don't do anything. It was a negative that changed it into a 1 over 3. What about 4 to the minus 1? That's right, it just becomes 1 over 4. So that's the top line of the fraction. What about the bottom line? What about 2 to the minus 2? Well, again, the negative in the power turns into a fraction, 1 over 2, except this time we have a squared. It's not to the power of minus 1, it's to the power of minus 2. So it's not just 1 over 2, it's 1 over 2 squared. Of course, 2 squared is 4. Let's just recap that because it's a really important moment here for your progress. 2 to the negative 2 has nothing to do with a minus sign. Notice the answer is positive a quarter. So let's get that out of our minds. What does the negative exponent do? Well, it turns it into a fraction. So the 2 becomes 1 over 2. Now the reason the story doesn't end there is because it was a power of minus 2, not power of minus 1. So that power of 2 sticks with, it clings to the 2, and so we get 2 squared, which is 4. Do you want to practice that with the final negative exponent that we have, 3 to the minus 2? What is that? Well, the negative in the power flips it to 1 over 3, and the squared makes it 3 squared, which is 9. So 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. And now notice what we're ending with. We're ending with another opportunity to practice your addition and subtraction skills. I strongly encourage you, if you haven't already, to pause the video and work out this entire fraction and the final answer before you even see me do it. Let's do this. So we have one third take away one quarter in the top. Going to the left, four times one is four. To the right, three times one is three. Three times four at the bottom is 12. Four take away three is one, so it's one over 12. Let's speed through the next addition. One quarter plus a ninth. To the left, that's nine. To the right, that's four. At the bottom, it's 36. Nine plus four is 13 over 36. And now we're going to divide 1 12th by 1336. How do we divide? We change it into a multiplied. So we flip the second fraction and change it into a multiplied. Now this would be a fraction I would probably simplify. I'd cancel out the 36 with the 12 and just get a 3. Or we can just do it as we did before. 1 times 36 is 36. 12 times 13 is 156 giving us our final answer, which again, we don't need to simplify, of 36 over 156. And I hope you are now super confident with adding fractions, taking away fractions, dividing fractions, multiplying fractions, and even converting negative exponents into their true form, which is fractions. Have a wonderful day.